Welcome. In this coding tidbit, we're going to address a common issue that comes up in projects where you want to solicit feedback or information from a user. For example, you might be asking a question about rocks or some geographic location or maybe a math question, and you want to ask the user a question and find out if they've given you the answer you expect. Based on the answer that they give you, you then want to have your program do one thing or another. So let's start out the program by planning out exactly what we're going to do. I've got my program up right now. I'm going to go ahead and right click and add a comment. Like all programs, we always start off by breaking down what it is that we want to do. I do that by using the comment block to um, keep track of my plan. So in this case, I'm going to start off with my cat and I'm going to say, um, the cat is going to welcome the user um, and then it, tell them we're going to take a field trip today and then is going to ask if they want to go swimming or skiing. Once they've done that, if the answer is swimming, then we we're going to change the backdrop to a beach. Else, if the answer is skiing, then we're going to change the backdrop to a winter scene. Uh, one thing as we do this, we want to make sure that the user gives uh, either skiing or swimming as an answer. If not, then ask the question again. Great, so that's our basic plan. Uh, to get started with it, in this case, we are gonna need a couple of more backdrops. So you'll notice that right now, I actually have my backdrop selected. Over on the right-hand side, there's a stage and it says backdrops. If you click on that, um, we can go ahead and choose a few new backdrops. So I'm gonna click on that. Now on the left-hand side where it says code, you'll notice there's a tab that says backdrops. Go ahead and click on that tab. I have three backdrops here, um, already prepared one. I've got my plain backdrop that's just white to begin with, and then there's a beach backdrop and an arctic backdrop. The way that I got those, if you go to choose a backdrop, you'll notice that there are a couple other backdrops that you can choose from here. We, I chose an arctic backdrop for my wintery scene, and I chose this beach Malibu backdrop for my other scene. Now that I've got my backdrops in place, let me go back to my code and decide what I want to do. I want to make sure that I don't start off with the wrong backdrop, so I'm going to start off with this white backdrop. The way that I'm going to do that is over here on the backdrops, I'm going to go to events and click on my when green flag is clicked. I want to make sure when that green flag is clicked that my backdrop switches to the white backdrop. So go to looks and under looks you'll notice there's a switch backdrop to block. Drag that block out and change it from arctic to beginning in my case which is what I call my white backdrop. Now if I were to switch to another backdrop uh, it would always be the white backdrop as soon as that green flag is clicked. So with that in place, let's go ahead and code our cat to start asking some questions. I'm going to select my cat sprite over in the uh, sprite area. I'm going to click on my cat and I'm going to rename my cat from sprite one to teacher, which makes a little more sense. <clears throat> now I'm going to use the when green flag is checked uh, block, just like I did with my stage. I'm going to grab that when green flag is clicked. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to welcome the user. So I'll say, Hi, today we are going on a field trip. Now, according to my plan, the next thing I wanted to do was to ask the question of whether, whether they wanted to go swimming or skiing. So I am now going to go to Sensing. The reason I go to Sensing is I'm trying to get information from the user. Anytime you're trying to get information from the user, you're usually going to find the block that you need in this Sensing area. So in this case, I'm going to drag out this fifth block, which says, what's your name and wait. I'm going to change what's your name to, uh, would you like to go swimming or skiing and wait. Now you notice it says and wait. The and wait is waiting for the user to give me information. Let's just test this out so far by clicking the green flag. I click the flag. The cat says, hi, today we're going on a field trip. Would you like to go swimming or skiing? You'll notice now a text area appears that allows the user to enter some sort of information and they can enter that information and hit return. 
And we haven't done anything after that. If I go back to my stage, I can find my plan and say, oh, well, if the answer is swimming, then change the backdrop to a beach. Else, if the answer is skiing, then switch the backdrop to a winter scene. So let's go to our cat and let's pull out some of these uh, if blocks in order to sense what it is that they asked. You can find the if blocks in the control types of blocks on the left hand side. Click on control. Now we have two different kinds of if blocks. I have a plain if block and I have an if else block. I'm going to use the if else block because I'd want to check multiple conditions. Now I'm going to attach this right after the ask and it says if and then it has some sort of condition that it's waiting for. And then it says then do this thing. Well the condition in this case is we want to check if the user has answered, uh, given an answer of swimming. So the way that I check that is I first go to my operators and operators have a lot of different mathematical operators but they also have some inequalities and inequality and some boolean operators that I can use. In this case I want to check if their answer equals something so I'm going to grab this equals block and put it right inside of my if statement. Now you'll notice the if is has two things like a scale it's an inequality here so it's asking on the if the thing on the left hand side equals the thing on the right hand side. Well the answer I want to check is the user's answer. If you go back to sensing you'll notice right under the ask and wait block there's an answer block and this is a variable that contains the user's answer whatever it is that they typed in. Now right now it says if the answer equals 50 I want to check if the answer equals swimming. Now if it does equal swimming then I'm going to do something. In this case I'm going to change the backdrop to a beach. So I'm going to go back to looks and get that same switch backdrop block which is about halfway down and I'm going to put that right in there. Right now it says switch backdrop to Arctic. That's not what I want. I want this one to be the beach. So I'm going to choose the beach from there. So now if I click on the green flag, we can walk through this. The cat says, hi, today we're going on a field trip. Would you like to go swimming or skiing? And if you answer swimming, it switches the backdrop to a beach. If I click on it again, you'll notice it does switch back to that white backdrop and asks the question again. Great, let's stop that. And let's do the same thing. If you'll notice in our plan, which I can see over here, I put my our plan in a comment on the backdrop. I have an else statement which says else if the answer is skiing, then change the backdrop to a winter scene. So click back on your cat and we're going to go to get another if else block by going to control and dragging out another if else block and putting it inside of the else. So in, the way that this is going to work is going to say if the answer is swimming, then change the backdrop to a beach. Else, if the answer is skiing, then switch the backdrop to a wintry scene. So the code I'm going to put in here is pretty much the same as this code. So I'm just going to right click and duplicate that block. Now that I've done that, I can put that right into that if statement. But instead of swimming, I want to ask if it's skiing. And the same thing, the action is going to be similar. I'm just going to change the value of that action. So switch backdrop to beach, I'm going to duplicate that and put it into my if statement. And instead of beach, I'm going to change that to Arctic. Now, if they don't say, um, after the first time, if they don't say swimming, then I'm going to check if they're saying skiing. If they don't say skiing, they haven't said either swimming or skiing, which are the only two answers we're accepting. So let's, in the else statement inside of our else, let's go ahead and give some feedback to the user. So instead of saying hello for two seconds, let's say something to the effect of, um, Please choose either skiing or swimming. So let's test this out. If I click on the green flag, the cat says, hi, today we're going on a field trip. Would you like to go swimming or skiing? If I say swimming, I switch to a beach backdrop. And if I try this again, and this time I enter skiing, it enters a wintry backdrop. If I try it again and I don't enter either of those things, I enter something like walking. It says, please choose either swimming or skiing. Now, the only problem we have at this point is we're not repeating the question again. This is a really useful trick that I'm about to show you. If you want to make sure that they've given you an answer that you're expecting, only one of a certain set of answers, we're going to use a block in our controls called the repeat until. Now the repeat until block says keep doing this thing over and over until we've met a certain condition. Now in this case the condition that we want to meet is the answer is either swimming or it's skiing.
So I'm going to copy both of these conditions that I've already created up here. I'm going to duplicate the answer equals skiing, and I'm going to duplicate the answer equals swimming. Now that I've got that, I need to put them together in some sort of or statement. Either it's the first one or it's the second one. I can find an or statement right by my uh, right underneath the equal block over in the operators. You'll notice there are these what are called Boolean operators, and, or, and not. And if I drag out this or, I can actually check multiple conditions. I can say either the answer is skiing or the answer is swimming. Now I'm going to drag that into my repeat until. And now I have a repeat, a sequence until the answer is skiing or it's swimming. Well, what is it that I want to repeat? I want to repeat asking the question, and if they don't give me the answer, telling them that they have to choose either swimming or skiing. So that is, in my code, pretty much everything from this ask statement to the end. I'm going to drag that and put it right inside of my repeat until block. Now that I've done that, I'm going to attach my repeat until right after the greeting. Now we're going to try it out. Hi, today we're going on a field trip. Would you like to go swimming or skiing? Well, I'm going to say swimming and see what happens. Great, it still works. So I'm going to click on the green flag again. I'll try the next condition, skiing, and that works the way I expected. Then I'm going to try it again, and I'm going to put not one of those two answers. I'll say I just want to go walking. Now the cat says, please choose either swimming or skiing, and asks the question again. So I'll say, actually, I want to go jumping. They'll say, well, please choose either swimming or skiing. I can do this all day. And the cat will never get tired of asking that same question over and over. So hopefully you can see how you might use this in your own projects or your students might use this in their projects. Anytime you want to ask a question and you want to make sure that question is part of a set of answers and you'll do something different depending on the answer you give, you might want to use a repeat until block together with some if and if else blocks inside of them to make sure that you've gotten the answers that you wanted and you can go ahead and make a dynamic program that will change depending on the answer that your student gives. So that's it for our coding tidbit. Hopefully this is helpful to you. Go out there and see what you can make.